Pero vida. Did I? Pura vida. Pura vida. Okay, sorry for my limited uh, uh, Spanish, but uh, uh, I'm a very privileged and honored to be here. Uh, and first of all, I would like to uh, acknowledge the uh, invitation from uh, uh, Sofia and the Ministry of Public Works and Transportation. Thank you for inviting me to be here. Um, uh, today I'm going to talk about the, some modeling work we have done at uh, several levels. Uh, we feel, at, at least I feel this is an improved uh, decision making uh, supporting tools, right? Um, I prepared quite a bit of materials, uh, so I will quickly go through the go through them. Oops, didn't work. It's not working. Just let me try. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh. Okay. Is it working? Side to side. Yeah, I know. Okay. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It's okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. S there's some yeah. delay, but it just work. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, my uh, co-authors or colleagues. Uh, most of them are my students, and one of them is my uh, supervisor, uh, John Douglas Hunt at the University of Calgary. Uh, my uh, presentation consists of the following a few parts. Uh, introduction, some theoretical framework for the models, so we are modeling framework we are using. Study data and the models. Uh, policy, some policy analysis cases we have done, and some conclusions and the recommendations. Oh, sorry, some dropping. I think it's better if you put it here this way. Oh, this way. Yeah. Ah, yeah. This way. This this side. Okay. Pass, please. Doesn't work. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Next. Yes. Yeah. Again. No. Okay. Let's try again. Oh. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm still working with this. Uh, <laughs> more learning. Uh, so, in China, we're facing this uh, fast expansion of the transportation systems at different levels. So, we need better policy analysis tools. Uh, the traditional four-step modeling system, lack of the simulation of the uh, social economic developments, uh, they have some, of course, they have something, but not as good as we are doing, and the land use, especially, they don't have um, <clears throat> really good tools to look at land use environment changes, and the, especially the interactions between the, you know, the economy, the transportation, and land use. Um, I feel the, you know, the planning, design, management of above systems uh, is difficult because of not the not only institutional barriers, actually, in a lot of places, in any country, there's a very uh, strong institutional barriers, but at the same time, there are also technical barriers. I hope the tools we are working, uh, we are offering could solve the later ones, not the first ones, the technical. Uh, Still learning with this guy. Why? Okay, it's getting better. Um, the, the models we're doing is called the integrated land use transport models. So it can uh, support the analysis of interactions between the uh, urban, provincial, regional transportation and the other systems, such as economy and the land uses. Uh, they can provide the scientific analysis and decision support for compound impacts. I mean, compound impacts is 
But the governments usually have different agencies, they have different policies, but we want to know the, the compound effect of all the policies they put together, so how would that you know, solve the problem like the uh, minister just mentioned, the, the climate uh, change, right? So we want to know that, but without a sound tool, that's probably very difficult, so each agency would do their own, and the compound effect could not be good to solve the problem, right? So for example, uh, so what kind of demand of land use transportation will be dictated by an economic and social development pattern? How will land use pattern influence the demand of transportation in this and the environment in the future? How will the development of uh, multi-model transportation system affect the urban, provincial, social, economic development, and land use pattern and air quality? Sorry, I'm not so well in. Somehow, <laughs> sorry. It's a jumping somehow for a certain reason, I don't know. Okay, yeah, this is something I mentioned, that the collaborative decisions of multiple commissions and agencies probably the, the transportation agency wants to do something to, you know, to mitigate the effect of uh, climate change, but the other department did something, uh, created some policies will counteract that. So we have this kind of tools to, to really look into that. Uh, it also can support some management decisions, but the, which is not the focus of today. Uh, the theoretical framework we use uh, is called PICAS. We have a kind of uh, transportation engineers we use on the system, on this complicated social economic uh, system. Like we have uh, activity totals on the top and then their locations and their interactions, that's the really drive the demand, like the people ex exchange the, the goods and the services and they interact, they interact with this kind of uh, price signals. Uh, for the totals, they consume labor, capital supplies, land and floor spaces and their social impacts and the environmental impacts and the transportation demand and supply interact with the, each other through the flows. So the traditional models uh, for decision makings uh, only does this part. So it's, we have the forecast population employment in the space and we throw them into the model, we do the, we do the four steps, because generation, distribution, most split and summit. More advanced models really look into this by doing, using the activity based. Uh, the traditional, the other models, like economic models, only look at this part. It's about the activity totals and how they consume the capital and the space, uh, uh, capital and the labor, this kind of thing. The land use model only look at this part, the especially the locations, activities, and how they consume the uh, land and the floor space. And there are also some social and natural environment models. So the, the PICAS usually look at this, so in a narrow sense is looking at this. So we have economic interactions to model, so this part, space development, and it also works with the transport model. And on top, there is a, a special economic, it's so just forecast the activity totals, but don't forecast their locations. So they interact together. And sometimes we have the social environmental uh, models as well. 
So we wish to develop some model like this. Uh, it's consider most of the uh, elements we want to consider in model, but in a lot of cases we customize them based on the needs. We may use some of them, we may not use some of them. This is jump somehow. So the, these are the models, uh, most of the uh, applications of the integrated models, and the pickers are somehow uh, focused on the, are mostly applied in North America and somehow in, uh, some of them in China. So the pickers represent this, the production chain consumption allocation system. It's a, a generalized approach for simulating special economic systems. It includes the following modules. The, the first one is called uh, uh, economic de demographic aggregate forecasting models. The second one, transport, activity allocation, space development. This is the, the a typical uh, Earth special uh, economic forecasting model. We use uh, some simple ways to forecast the totals of different activities, like an S curve or exponential small thing. And this is the, the uh, uh, core uh, module of the entire PICAS model. It's called activity allocation. The concern is the quantity of the activities uh, and their locations and the flows between them, the exchanges. This is the uh, decision tree, like how to allocate this, uh, the activities over the space. Uh, in a model, actually, it calculates from the bottom and all the way up and make decisions. But people make, people or the, or the business make decisions like down, top to down, right? Like where we should live or where should we have the factories and then look at their uh, lifestyles, consumption, production, and then exchange locations, which is tightly related to the accessibility or transportation supply. So this is a, a complicated uh, decision trees. We use uh, random utility theory to model the, the entire process. I just skip all those uh, questions. SD model is the space development, is where the new space will be supplied based on the uh, demand, especially the price from the, uh, the, the, the price signal of the spaces. This will simulate the new development, demolition and redevelopment. This is the, the, how the uh, simulation is done, we usually use the random utility model, the nested logic model to simulate this. Uh, we have two different ways to do this. One is we use disaggregated space development. We do this by partial, partial by partial simulation to reproduce or simulate the future uh, space or land use patterns. We also have another one, if the data doesn't support the uh, disaggregated modeling, we have the aggregate space development uh, model. This one will not be data hungry as the, 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 the previous one, but it also does the work uh, to simulate the, the development. And of course the transportation uh, modeling. We use uh, uh, transport in, uh, transport cause function, and then to model the impedance uh, from the multi-model transportation network. And it's also interacted with the land use model by taking the demand from land use model, but offer the congested travel time and uh, cost back to the uh, land use model to influence the uh, location choice of the activities. Uh, the study error data the model, I just quickly introduce to you the uh, several models we developed. This is for the city of Wuhan. 
So the Wuhan is 13.5 uh, million population. There's much of uh, uh, area, uh, some uh, quick uh, uh, high growth rates over the uh, last few years. Uh, this is a zones we developed for the entire city with the land use zones and the uh, traffic analysis zones. And this is a uh, road network, the bus network, and the metro network, and the population employment. We have multi sources of big data to support the modeling. We have uh, population employment from census, we have mobile signal data, we have the car data, fair car data, those for public transport. <coughs> and we developed the model by design, by providing such a design diagram, which is important. It's like a blueprint of your product, uh, which uh, tell, tells you like how many activities we are going to represent, how many goods and services we are going to look at, and the, how many different types of land and space we, we are going to model, and the, how they interact with each other. Those are activities we uh, modeled, uh, represented, like from agriculture to industry, to transportation, to uh, tertiary sectors and the households, and the government services. Uh, commodities, we have goods and the services, and all the way to the uh, uh, capital accounts, those uh, the labor types and the space types we modeled. This, those are the curves we developed for the space supply function and the space use function based on the observed data. And those, those just show you the model runs and how the uh, aggregate errors of the model decreases and uh, reach the uh, convergence of the model. Uh, we also develop another one, it's a provincial one. Oh, sorry, this one. Why? Bus stations, this is a model calibration. So, this is a province uh, in the middle of the, somehow in the middle of the country. Uh, we use this one to look at the interactions between land use and transportation. So this is the zones we designed. We have a provincial model. We also extend that a little bit because we want to look at the uh, throughputs of the uh, through flows from the uh, one important uh, waterway in, uh, uh, infrastructure. I'm going to talk about that uh, more later to, uh, uh, tomorrow. And we have this extent model to look at, you know, those uh, uh, extent areas to to model the throughput uh, flows, waterway and ports and the railway, those things. And those are multi-source data we have, from published employment to freight OD demand and uh, input out tables, observe the shares of different modes. We also have remote sensing data to uh, tell us the uh, land use patterns. Uh, this is uh, the uh, modeling flow charts. It's quite uh, complicated or difficult to understand, but we have the uh, we have the Jiangxi model, the provincial model, we also have extended uh, Jiangxi model to work together to forecast both the flows within the province and then those flows going through the uh, provinces. Those are functional class of the links we defined for, for the modeling system, multi-model transportation system. And we also need to 
convert the, the monetary flows from the land use model into the tonnage and then use in the, uh, in the transport model. And we estimate the flow OD flows between the provinces and major seaports using somehow simple gravity model. And this is a model calibration results. Uh, the observed shares are, uh, are very similar to the predicted ones, and the counts also shows the good fits uh, for them uh, predicted and observed the flows of the network. Uh, regional ones, uh, it's called the Yangtze River Economic Belt. Uh, this is like uh, over 2,700 uh, kilometers. The, it's like a very important economic belt over the country, cover the nine uh, provinces and the two metropolitan, metropolitan areas. We have different zoning uh, at land use level and the, the traffic analysis level. There are the <clears throat> networks we, the traffic analysis zones and the railway, waterway, and the highway uh, we used to model the, to create the multimodal transportation system on, the, on your right. And we have the uh, population and the, and the economic uh, uh, totals forecasting die. And we also have the, the same as the provincial model, we have the uh, remote sensing data from several years to look at how the land use changes over the time. And we also have uh, the big data from different modes to show how the vehicles are moving across the space. And we also have the point-based uh, traffic counts data to tell uh, the flows at different uh, locations. Uh, again, this is uh, the, somehow the architecture of the entire uh, Yangtze River model. From top is the economic and demographic forecasting model, AD module, and then we got the totals and we put them into activity allocation module. We, we got their locations and the, the the interactions resulting in the free demand, we put them in the transportation uh, module. And then once we got year T done, we move to the next year, T plus one. And this is uh, how we synthesize the uh, land use. Uh, because of the, uh, the data we got, remote sensing data we got, just give us very coarse land use categories. We need the more than just that, we have to do some census, uh, data census work to provide the final category of land use uh, data for the model. So this part uh, is some uh, examples we did, like policy analysis examples we did with the models I just talked about. Uh, for example, uh, for the first urban model, uh, we can look at the magnitude or size of each type of activities in the future. This is done, very done uh, very simple and simply and very quickly. And urban land use and space pattern of the future. And how congested of the road of the city of Wuhan would be if the activities we model keep increasing with above growth rates and the future land use patterns are constrained in specific ways. This is a, the observed data for different activities over the years. We just use the ways I talk about, the S-curve or exponential smoothing to extrapolate them into the future. This is a forecast of the different space development over the, over the time. And this is a forecast of traffic uh, flows over the uh, years. And we have a, a case to look at the impact of a particular new town uh, outside the core of the city. So this part is the, this part is the, 
and call the city. There's, they're planning a new town on that corner. We, we want to look at the, the impact of that. Uh, so you can see actually a lot of the ring roads and the important roads become congested. So we provide some feedback to their planning to say if you want to really have a new town there, you have to be better to upgrade your existing transportation infrastructure. The second one is uh, uh, the model. We developed this model is really look at the uh, a possible uh, uh, national waterway project. Uh, it's called the Ganyu uh, Canal. <clears throat> Again, we can look at the uh, size of each activity, the future urban land use pattern, and how the multimodal freight volume of Jiangxi province could be if uh, the, the, that uh, canal is constructed. Oh, this jumped, okay, sorry. This is very similar to the one I just talked about. It also shows the magnitude or size of different activities. And this sh show you the forecast data op from observed population uh, to the uh, future population. And the forecasted and observed uh, transportation warehouse floor space. The flows. Uh, I have 10 minutes. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, we have this uh, uh, fl flow of the, uh, we signed the, the, the free demand into the network. So we, we can look at the flows. Uh, one inside of the province, the other one is extended model over the, you know, nearly half of the uh, middle and the south, middle and the south of China. Uh, we found, you know, if we, if the, that uh, project is going ahead, like the, 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 the canal is, uh, project is approved and the, uh, will be built, then there's a, uh, actually a significant dis uh, uh, reduction in the uh, tonnage kilometer of the highway. The other uh, greener modes like uh, waterway and the railway will see uh, the increased uh, tonnage and kilometer. Uh, this is a, uh, the, the, the regional model we developed for the Yangtze River Economic Belt. Again, the, the first one is very similar. The second one is also very similar. Probably the last one is a little bit different. Uh, again, we, we can do this kind of analysis, like uh, uh, the uh, magnitude of different, uh, the, or the size of different activities, and how they interact to create different uh, uh, demand, exchange demand. And the regional land use policies, if we have different regional land use policies, like along the east coast, uh, your right side, you can see the space use density is very, very high. If, uh, if we keep, if the country keep putting the activities there, there would be a lot of problems in terms of the land the supply, the quality of the environment, quality of life. So we want to test if we provide different land use policies, how the activities will be uh, redistributed over the space. And assignment of uh, uh, free demand over multi-model transportation system. Uh, the policies that can be tested is for example, how should we plan the multi-model transportation system over this, in this Yangtze River economic belt, over this to create a much more, much more efficient uh, transportation corridor. Uh, and there is also a, a bottleneck around the Three Gorges Dam because what, there is a big dam and it, uh, the, the ships has to go through the 
the, the locks and that create a lot of congestions. So uh, there are always questions like how we should configure or design that part of the multi-model transportation system to solve the problem in, of that uh, significant uh, congestions in the waterway transportation uh, at Street Gorgeous Dam. Uh, and s some others, like sea and rail connections, higher railway and water connections, like the multimodal transportation system. Some details. And the waterway system, we, it, the first one is we want to study the impact and the benefits of the construction of secondary locks for Sri Gorgeous Dam. There's uh, already one pair of the locks uh, at, the, at the dam, but uh, they use up all the capacity. The, the, uh, the highest delay could be like several weeks for some ships. So they are thinking to build the second pair of the locks. And estimate the wider economic impact of investment. I'm going to talk about this uh, uh, in my tomorrow presentation. And the regional railway network. Uh, so they are actually the high speed train system along the Yangtze River, the for, but that's only for passenger uh, transportation. Uh, people are talking about the, you know, to build the other lines to uh, transport the goods, but we, we feel that's totally unnecessary. If we build the secondary, um, second uh, uh, locks, second pairs of the locks, then the, the, the capacity of the Yangtze River uh, water transportation will be increased quite a bit. So there is actually no need to build the, the railway uh, parallel to the Yangtze River. Actually, that will be a big waste to, to us. And the regional highway system, especially the connectivities. Uh, actually, the, the, there is a historical reason for this because the, the three modes used to be managed by three different uh, ministries in China, actually two of them. Uh, originally, it was managed by three of them. So the, right now, um, uh, the, they put them together, but uh, there are still a lot of disconnections between the different modes. So uh, we want to use a model to look at the connections and the transfers, uh, so where they should really do the work to uh, enhance the connectivity between the different modes. Actually, each mode like works uh, quite well at this time, but the the coordination, the connectivities among the modes uh, actually uh, have a lot of problems. Uh, some concurrence and recommendations. Uh, the first one is. Uh, we feel the urban and reg regional transportation system is closely related to the other systems, like the economy, like a land use environment. Uh, and therefore, this creates a need to, re to have a system considering the, and the treatment in the modeling to model them together and the planning and design the corresponding infrastructure. So as I talked about at the very beginning, so the integrated models can be used to support coordinated planning and the collaborative decision making so related to the above uh, multiple systems. Uh, so, but this can be done technically, but administratively or the, you know, uh, institutionally how this can be done, that's you know, the, the work for the politicians so the, you know, to, to solve. So it's, re it's really our recommendation to develop uh, integrate uh, land use transport models for improved uh, urban, provincial, regional uh, planning and management of uh, infrastructures. So which will empower the integrated planning management of transportation and the other system. 
that's, that's it. That's my presentation. Thank you very much. Institucionalmente, ¿cómo se maneja el modelo dada la cantidad de actores envueltos, ministerios, municipalidades, y cómo se verifica la confiabilidad de los datos? Uh, so in China we had the same problem. Uh, the the railway uh, and the water and the highway used to be managed by different uh, uh, departments or ministries, and later on they they solved this problem by merging them together. So there is a, a ministry uh, of transportation. Uh, in place now. So the ministry basically manage all the modes. Uh, for the data to model this uh, uh, multi-model transportation system, um, I feel the, the, the data could be the problem. But uh, I used to feel that you know, the data must be the problem. But um, after I develop several models. Uh, I feel if you really look into it, you can solve the problem. Especially the, the, the big data is available now. So uh, we can use the big data to solve a part of the problem. Uh, especially for those uh, details. Um, for those macroeconomic, uh, uh, microscopic part of the, um, or microscopic aspect of the model actually, uh, there are always official uh, statistics published by the government, so we can use them to to develop the you know the ballpark of the model, and then we use the big data to to provide the detail to to solve the uh, data uh, availability problem. Yeah. ¿Cuáles son los tiempos para recopilar los datos y el tiempo de respuesta de los diferentes datos? Por el modelo. This is a good question. <laughs> this is a good question for this kind of uh, models. Uh, in in around 1970s, there is a, uh, a famous paper to criticize this kind of model. It's, a, it's called a data hungry, right? It's a, and at the time, there is no big data, there is no enough uh, competing power. But as the time goes, those problems actually are being solved, or partially solved, at least. Um, I got a group of students, so that's my advantage. I use my uh, student to process uh, uh, the, the all kinds of data. But for an agency or for, for a, a company, it might be a little bit challenging, but I believe with the advancement of the technology, especially the big data and the computing, you know, we, 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 we can solve this problem. For, for those kind of models, we usually need like uh, two or three months to, to have a, you know, a, a rough model in place. Uh, that's uh, basically the ballpark, yeah.